Hi, welcome to the part 22 of this video series. These are all real exam questions. Those chances of clearing the exam is very high. Almost guaranteed. Subscribe to my channel, please. Hit the like button if you like my videos and put in your comments if you have any positive or constructive comments. Please refer parts 1 to 21 for previous questions. Let's jump into this question. Your company implements dash to automatically add a watermark to Word documents. So here, what is the problem statement? We want to add watermarks to Word documents that contain credit card information. Any understanding of why we are doing it? Because it has PII data. What is PII data? So that is a good question. Difference between PII and non-PII. So your personal data, which is private, like your Aadhaar number or your social security numbers, or PII information, for example, anything to do with medical, education, financial, employment information can be considered PII. It is sensitive for loss or compromise or disclosure without authorization. And to go one level further, there is something called personal data as per GDPR. GDPR is something that the data should remain protected in Europe. It should not go outside of Europe. So they even go one step further. Your name, home address, email address, whatever identifies you personally, your gender, race, religion, everything they consider as PII. What is non-PII? Device IDs, IP addresses, cookies, for so on. See, if you get such in, uh, questions in the exam, always remember information protection is the software or the service available for this purpose. It will add a watermark to the document, which means that it contains PII information. Credit card information is a PII information. Okay, but we will still look at other things like Azure policies. If you want to implement uh, policies across the organization to maintain organizational standards, it is then that you can use Azure policy for from a compliance standpoint as well. It is not meant for PII and securing the word documents. So policies is wrong. Now DDoS protection. Let's understand what is DDoS protection. It is used primarily for websites where you want to avoid penetration attacks. So that is the purpose of DDoS. For example, a DDoS attack attempts to exhaust an application's resources. For example, if we spawn too many threads, suppose you have a website which is hosted on Azure VMs. So somebody will try to spawn too many threads to, so that it will look like so many people are trying to access at once and get your resources out of capacity and make your application down. Do we have any such requirements? No, we want to secure the word documents which contains credit card information. So DDoS is wrong. Let's look at the last one that is Active Directory Identity Protection. See, this is used to protect your identity. Suppose you are using an Azure VM and you are trying to log from your laptop, which is not having uh, a standard IP. That means it has anonymous IP. If you try to access Active Directory in Azure platform, it will ask you to change your password because it gets some kind of feeling that it's a uh, anonymous IP this request is coming from. So I need to check or ask to change the password. Here, we don't have any such requirements. So if you see information protection, it discovers, classifies and protect the documents and emails by applying labels to the contents. This is exactly what our solution needs. So we will lock this answer and move forward. Let's look at the next question. See, the question is saying you whether your environment meets the regulatory requirements or not, which service will tell you that out of these. Let's look at the option. The first one says uh, talks about service health is service health. The, what is the purpose of this? See, it checks the services health and it will send you personalized alerts. OK, it will not help you with regulatory requirements. Let's look at knowledge center. That's the option B. 
see there is something called synapse knowledge center and what does it hold it will hold some of the samples galleries related to synapse studio it is not used for regulatory requirements let's look at security center i think this is the answer security center it is used for regulatory requirements see i like i told you in the previous videos from 4th of april security center and defender has been merged together and the service is called microsoft defender for cloud okay so expect this term security center to be replaced by microsoft defender for cloud in your future exam it will help you assess your compliance and add any other regulations such as nest cis or organization specific security requirements so i think this is the answer let's still scan through azure uh, advisor see it is a solution which uh, gives it's just like your chartered accountant who advises you for filing your tax returns it is similar to that it will use the telemetry information and it will analyze your resource configuration which can help you improve your cost effectiveness and performance reliability and security of your azure resources so the purpose is not regulatory requirements we will lock this answer and move forward let's look at the next question you can view your company's regulatory compliance report compliance report from which of these services what we discussed in the previous question where does compliance uh, which service is used for compliance security center so this is the security center documentation and we are talking about compliance dashboard so this is the answer but always remember nowadays security center is called microsoft defender for cloud like i told advisor is just like your chartered accountant for filing your tax returns it will give you advice about cost effectiveness performance security posture monitor tells you about it will monitor the services and it will tell you or give you the logs which you can use to understand what is happening with which services so we will lock this answer and move forward here we have three questions the first one says identifies oh sorry identities stored in on premises directory can be synced with azure active directory so consider this scenario you have uh, an active directory on premises and then you have an azure active directory which is on azure cloud and you have few users for example 100 users here so the best way to sync this up with azure is you do a sync up here so that both the environments are in sync so this answer should be yes the second question says identity is stored in ad third party cloud services and on premises active directory can be used to azure uh, to access azure resources yes it can be used okay there is no problem using that that's the beauty of active directory and always remember in real life nobody operates fully on cloud it's either hybrid cloud or multi cloud so hybrid cloud is always there and if there is a hybrid cloud you will always want to do uh, a two way sync up and this resource or identity can access services on azure and vice versa so this is yes and the third one says azure has built in authentication and authorization services that provide secure access to azure resources perfectly the active directory itself has authentication services and that is the purpose of active directory so this is the final answer all are yes now let's look at the last question of this video here it says azure germany can be used by legal residents of germany only and we have to say uh, if this statement is correct or if you want to modify if it is correct then you say no change is needed but if you want to modify you have to choose one of these so this statement is wrong okay 
Azure or Germany can be used by legal residents of Germany only? No. Even uh, Americans can use it. Even Indians can use it. Even Africans and Arabs can use it. No problem with that. So we have to choose one answer out of these. Okay. So the B option B suggests only enterprises that are registered in Germany. No, it doesn't matter, man. Uh, you don't have to be a company based in Germany to access the data centers of Azure in Germany. That's crap. Option C suggests only enterprises that purchase their Azure licenses from a partner based in Germany. No, 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 no that's wrong. That's totally wrong. So imagine if you are uh, some company like Infosys and in Germany, you do a partnership with Ericsson, for example. You don't have, you don't need that partnership to access that stuff. So the last option D that is correct because any user or enterprise that is that requires its data to reside in Germany can use it. For example, you know you can be a user who is based in USA, but your data is residing in Germany and qualifying for the GDPR status. Okay, there is a compliance requirement for GDPR that your data cannot move out of Europe, but you can still access that data from um, USA. If you have that requirement, then option D is correct. This is the final answer. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you like my videos. On AZ900, there are two playlists. This is the one which is the latest one. There is one more playlist which is a relatively older one, but that is still relevant. The same questions are being asked still in the exam. This brings us to the end of part 22. See you in the next part. Stay tuned.